Welcome to the Sports Betting Podcast from Pregame.com for Super Bowl Week 2010. I'm your host, RJ Bell. I'm joined by Marco D'Angelo, 30 years in the business, Vegas runner, genuine professional batter here in Vegas, star of the CNBC special on gambling. This is segment five of six of our Super Bowl extravaganza, and this is our second segment on prop bets, and I'm going to be making my official free pick on a prop. So, talking about our free picks, we give them here every week, each of us, almost every week. Marco, 16 and 7 since the start of football, 13 and 5, and 11 and 8. So, we're all above, you know, in the profit area. Absolutely. And you guys, you know, just doing some quick calculations here 40 and 20, 40, 66%. Awesome. Okay, and by the way, I'm leading this decade. In the decade of the 2000s, I'm 75%. In this decade. Dude, if you had a 900 number with that, I don't, I don't want to forget about it. I don't it. want to make a big deal about it, but, but 75%. All right. Over a whole month. So here's what I'm doing. We talked about in the first segment, VR gave his official free pick, is props are inflated. It's such a public betting proposition and the public likes to bet over yeah. they, uh, they like they remember what they saw recently and they like to bet over I'm going under Reggie Bush rushing yards and you got to shop and we talked about that last time you can go to pregameaction.com and get multiple sports books and get the best numbers here I've seen this range all the way down from 28 up to 35 yeah so let's assume th- I'm gonna go with 33 30 let's say 33 uh, you should be able to get that number under and here's the point one I have a bias towards the under with these bets because of the public number two Reggie Bush is such a marquee name that except for the game against Arizona you know I mean I guess there's been exceptions but has not shown it in general and when you have a marquee name that's a little bit overrated, that's the best situation to go under with props. Now, Peyton Manning is way the marquee name, but this guy is so good, you don't, I don't think you want to make a living betting against, against him. him. Yeah, exactly. But we got a guy that is one level down on the marquee scale who is four or five or six levels down when it comes to performance. And the way the Saints use him a lot. I think you have an edge there. They use them more out in the flat, out in the screen, and it won't be, um, you know, handoffs. So, again, there's always a chance of him breaking one, but the beauty is you only got to win 55 out of 100 bats to take home the moolah. Okay, so we've got some time to talk some more props. Any, anyone disagree with my Bush prop? 75% in this decade? How can we... Disagree. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good, yeah, but that'd be, that'd be nuts. Cash yeah, yeah, two and a half course. out of every ten bets. Yeah. <laughs> you think we ought to give away some of your money since you're, you know, celebrating? Uh... <laughs> that's a good point. Then uh, what we do is, though, we uh, did give a free pick this time. Each week with our podcast and the videos, we actually give away a coupon in case you want to get a very, uh, the biggest best bets over at pregamepros.com. Marco. All right. Well, it's Super Bowl week, so the coupon's going to be Super Bowl, all one word, and the number 10. That's going to get you $10 off any package you want. Just load up your shopping cart, enter that coupon code at the shopping cart, and you'll get $10 off. And yes, if the package is only $10, it's free. And just a quick note to you, I know there's only one game this Sunday, you know, it's Super Bowl, and a lot of times people have their minds made up or they don't want to buy two cappers because... You know, I got one game. But we're going to have props in a lot of the packages this week. So not only are you going to get a selection on the Super Bowl, but you're going to get each guy's, you know, props. And, you know, I know I'm going to have four or five props in yeah. there on Sunday. And I know you will, too. Absolutely. VR, who knows how many you'll have. I'll have, I'll have <laughs> you'll have excitement throughout the game. All right. So I tell you, this is it's, it's, it's good timing because the Super Bowl segues right into February basketball conference and then into March Madness. We've got so many guys that are hot, and we, we don't want to over tout here, but VR, number one documented in the entire country in college basketball. We got Goodfella, 12 winning months of the last 13 months. 12 months you would have taken money home, one month you would have paid it. We got Spartan, 66% on his top plays, and he was in, what, 9 out of the last 10. 10 out of the last 11. 10 out of the last 11 now. We've got a lot of guys that are hot. Mike Cook is hot, on and on and on. Check it out for game.com. All right, so let's get back to the content. Marco, does uh, another prop jump out at you? or? Well, there, there's a couple props, but one that we talked about in previous segments about tightness, teams coming out tight, 
And I think a good prop is to take the Colts for the first quarter. Experience factor, we said about what a big edge it is. And you made a statement talking that uh, you said that it's worth three points to a team that's been to a Super Bowl and won it in the last five years. Well, you can take the Colts at minus a half for the first quarter. Mm -hmm. So if they're winning, they're, they're winning, winning at the end of the first quarter. So, I mean, I think that's a good play. because You I, know, that worries me, though, because I, I like it, because I think you make a good point, is if the comfort factor is going to mean anything, it's going to be at the very beginning of the game yeah. and maybe the very end of the game and not so much in the middle. So I like that. What concerns me is that we talked about this. If the total in the first quarter is only 10 and a half, they're expecting two scores, right? Seven and three. And, and that's what they're saying, is if there's two touchdowns, it's over. Three, you know, even a touchdown and two field goals, it's over. Is if you're laying the half, you're pretty much saying the Colts are going to, it's almost like you're laying three and a half if you assume that it's going to be a low scoring first quarter. So if it's nothing, nothing, seven, seven. I mean, the only way you're winning is if it's seven, three, you, or if it ends up being, or seven, three, Colts, or if it ends up being a much higher scoring first quarter than than the bookies think. So I'm not. That concerns me a little bit. Is that minus half feels inconsequential, but really it's huge because ties are going to happen so often in the first quarter. Well, it, it is the same as laying three. I mean, you got you got to win, you know, by most likely field goal because. The chances of a safety in the first quarter are very slim. And that brings up another point is the, you know, the three, the only way you're going to fall actually three would be like a 10-7, or I guess you could fall a 3 nothing too. So anyway, any, what's jumping out? Um, quickly, I think they're, they're inflated numbers on, on receiving yards, on total yards, because of all the talk about both teams' offenses. So I think you definitely have to start with looking towards the under, mm -hmm. um, especially for a lot of these players. I like Reggie Wayne under as well. They have him as high as 82 and a half, and you're getting plus money by going under. And when you just look at statistically what he's done throughout the year, you're getting value there. There's some pros that are batting dozens of these props. Absolutely. Um, the other one that sticks out to me that I think makes sense when you break it down is the Colts that have more field goals. And you only have to lay minus 130, not only, it's not a good, you don't want to get in the habit of laying 130, but I think it's the right side because the thing we said about the Colts is they can't rush the ball. That's been their weakness. And even though a team could go down the field, when you get into that red zone and there's only one thing you could do, it becomes easier for the defense. When they don't have to worry about the run, I think they have more of an advantage being able to just play against the pass. And I think you're, you're, they're more prone to be stopped than I think the Saints would. So I think you're going to have a little more field goals by the Colts. You get one, hold, you get one holding penalty and, and it stalls the drive. Yeah, and, and just, you know, even if they play back. I, I, I got to be honest pass. with you. Watching that Saints-Vikings game, though, it just seems like that this offense with the Saints, I mean, is, as much as I'm down on the Saints, it's almost like it breaks the rules. I mean, rem you know, remember, and, and really the defense of the Saints breaks the rules too. <laughs> I mean, like at one point we were rooting so hard for the you know, Saints, they sack far, it was second and 22, yeah, and you know, just pass. one one pass, it's first down. It's like normal teams are going to throw a screen on first down, and then they end up having third and 12, and they only make it 20% of the time. I, I just don't know, you know, I, I'm just, it's... This game really has me so leery because on one hand, I love unders, I love going against marquee offenses and, and going under or betting against these teams, but you just gotta wonder if this but just is a different you're level. You're right, but on the flip side, if the Saints are behind, they're not gonna settle for field goals either. Yeah, no, and I'm not questioning no, no, your I'm problem as much as, another... I just think the whole, and then we gotta wrap here, I just think the whole red zone stuff, yeah. you know, we gotta be careful, these are a different level offense, Mark, at 37. I think the better, Play on that is actually taking Matt Stover. He's listed at one and a half field goals. Take Stover over, over one and a half, and you're getting a plus 105. I think it's the safer way to go with that. Wow, it's that low. All right, good stuff. Okay, that was uh, five full segments on the Super Bowl. Next up, we're going to be talking the biggest college basketball game on Saturday. Remember, you can get all of our videos at pregame.tv. Or if you want to download and listen, just go to iTunes and search for pregame.com.